Hey guys, Kev here, and I want to do a comparison video. So I'm going to try to keep this short. Uh, maybe we'll call it, um, I don't know, knife battles or, uh, you know, that kind of shit. I know a lot of people do these and have names for them, so I'm not going to call it Battle to the Death, and I'm not going to call it uh, Knife Wars or something. Um, let's think of something good or just call it a comparison video, right? Um <laughs> So anyway, these uh, knives were, were graciously loaned in by uh, my buddy Jake, uh, Bearded Gear. So his channel will be linked in the description. Uh, great dude, great channel. You guys probably know and love him. So um, I don't need to go into that too much. Um, we have here the Giant Mouse Ace Riv. And this is in the Micarta variation in LMAX steel. So you have Micarta on one side titanium on the other wire clip lmax steel um you have this uh, teardrop shape hole for deployment um a very nice blade on here sheep's footy type deal um very generous choil there um and obviously one of the big differences between these knives a frame lock um, so that does come into play here nice thin stock crown spine uh, made by Riot with jimping halfway up or you know a third of the way up in Vox fashion um, just a very very overall clean and uh, comfortable and fantastic knife I did disassemble this one and I added uh, skiff bearings for Jake uh, that was my thank you for letting me borrow these. Uh, there is absolutely no blade play, and it uh, shakes home pretty nicely. And uh, they literally have been in there for five minutes, so they are only going to break in and get better. And I'll let him report on that, because this is a knife that he's going to use a lot. I know that. He loves this knife. So I'm interested to see if he notices anything Um you know, using the skiffs on an actual user knife like this as opposed to something, you know, it just sits in his case or whatever. Um, then you have the Spider Co. Little Native. And this one here is an exclusive. This one is the Rivers Edge Cutlery or Rec exclusive. Comes with their OD Green G10. And this, uh, I don't even know what the color is. Brown, Coyote Brown kind of deal on the uh, or od brown i guess on the blade this is a cerakote i believe um and this is sporting this is sporting this is sporting a uh, s30v blade no i'm sorry idiot cts 204p carpenter steel that's what all the rec uh spider co exclusives in this colorway um have they have this green g10 color combo with this od brown coyote brown whatever it is and 204p so uh, you have pretty comparable steels on here uh 204p is uh more in line with m390 and uh cpm 20 cv they are actually identical in composition just made by different companies and lmax is a very good steel i believe it's a german steel and um it is also highly regarded i would say it is a step notch below 204p so like if you picture s30v s35vn right s45vn really close next to that then you would have uh l max and then you would have m390 20 cv 204p and i know there's a, a million other steels probably in that range like you know i haven't even brought up xhp which is probably more like s35 vn but i like it a little better anyway it's just a notch under m390 204p i would say but it has its own kind of attributes that are very good and so does m390 so it's like you know you lose a little on the edge retention for the lmax but maybe you gain something in strength or corrosion I'm not an expert in steel. If you want to know more about that and the specific difference in those steels, please go research that. Uh, search it on YouTube. I'm sure there's plenty of videos comparing LMAX to M390 204P 20CV, but that is as much as I'm going to go into it. Um, 
I personally would not probably have an issue with either of these steels or ever need to sharpen it or anything because I barely use my knives and I have so many that carrying one knife long enough to need it to be sharpened, especially because I strop a lot, um, it, it, you know, it's just not going to happen for me. So anyway, that was a little rant there on steel. Back to the little native. Uh, you have this drop point blade, classic spider co hole. A classic spider co ergos which is why i wanted to compare these they're both tiny they're about the same size they both have the same kind of choil design you can see some differences already uh, but overall they have the same feel in hand right small comfortable in your hand very nice to use um melt in your hand type feel and i will tell you which one i prefer in the end and i'm going into this blind guys so i want to be upfront about that i have not reviewed this knife i unboxed it earlier today i have had this knife um i had the titanium variant for a couple weeks before i sold it carried it a couple times used it a couple times and fidgeted with it a little bit you know so i have more familiarity with this knife than I do with this knife, but I have experience with spider codes, the compression lock, um, their ergos and everything that I feel confident in giving my opinion on this. And again, it's more of like, let's call it a blind taste test, right? I don't have a ton of experience with either. I haven't fully reviewed either yet. So for me, this is kind of fun because it's kind of like, what am I feeling different? What am I noticing? And then I'm passing that along to you. So by no means am I the expert on the rib or the little native or both. And uh, if you're basing your buying decision on this, just know I'm going on the fly here by my gut. Okay. Um, and it's a big gut. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> know what I'm saying? Uh, anyway, sir. So, yeah. So what I want to start with, I think is kind of do it like I do a review, right? So I want to talk about aesthetics first. And both of these knives are interesting to me. This guy right here, and let's show the show sides, right? This guy right here looks like a little whale to me, like some kind of a fish or something. Um, normally spider codes look like birds, but this one kind of looks like a little whale to me. Um, it's not like horrendous, you know, but it's not like, ooh, that's sexy, right? When it's closed like this, yeah, it's kind of nice looking. Uh, very simple, you know, knife, basically. And it's a Spyderco, so it's never going to be like, ooh, that's sexy, right? It's just not what Spyderco is going for. It's always uh, function over form for them. Um, so nothing crazy here um, with the G10. So I don't always go into materials too deep because it just kind of comes up. It's obvious. Um, I'm not a fan of G10 really at all um i actually kind of hate it especially if it's jade um and i i usually make fun of this colorway <laughs> so jake bearded gear and kyle d2m knives and gear we talk all the time and they love this colorway um uh, they absolutely love the od green like you know coyote brown camo look and they also both like like blacked out stuff and i don't know i'm not it's not my taste as of now but this knife is good looking. I really do like the colorway in person. So it could be more of a, uh, like the pictures don't do it justice situation. And I know Jake has had a few rec exclusives. So he knew probably like, yeah, that looks good in real life. So he can kind of match that up in his brain when he sees a picture of this. Whereas I saw it and was like, Bleh, you know, um, but now that I have it, yeah, this thing is nice looking. Would I prefer it to be something other than G10? Yes. Um, but you know what? You get it to be kind of lighter weight with the G10. This is a smaller knife. So it kind of makes sense um, that you would have G10 on here. This is kind of a little man's work knife, a, a fifth pocket secondary type deal. Um, so it does make sense that it's G10. It's nice and uh, lightweight enough. Um, it does have liners in there on both sides, steel liners. Um, this blade, I believe is Cerakoted and it looks fantastic. The, 
the finish work, everything looks good, uh, down to the internals of the blade. It just looks really good. It looks sexy. Um, the more I talk about it, the more I like it with this black screws and everything. Um, the Riv. So this guy also looks kind of funky. And I don't know, to me, this is kind of ugly. It's like a mini Biblio, which is already ugly to me. Um, you know, it's a Vox design. He's kind of hit or miss for me in the aesthetics department. Uh, one of his knives that I absolutely love, you guys know, is the F5.5. And I have multiples. I had four or five. Um, now I just have these two uh, because I had one modded and gave that to Kyle. And I gave another one away in payment of something. So it just kind of worked out that way. And I kept these two, which is, you know, kind of more my style, carbon fiber titanium. But this looks sexy to me, right? This, hang on. Sorry about that. My kid woke up and said to help her back to sleep, get her pacifier. Anyway, so what I was saying was th these look, this looks sexy to me. And it might be the combination of carbon fiber titanium with the blade shapes and everything. Um, but this is just kind of, I don't know. It is what it is. It ain't sexy to me. Uh, and it ain't like garbage ugly either. Um, but it's kind of like the Spyderco. Um, you know, it's functional. And that's why it's good. And it's it's fine. You know, it's just a neutral on the aesthetics. Whereas that Spyderco little native is kind of growing on me in the aesthetics department. I don't really like the overall shape of it or anything. But the colorway is growing on me a lot um so there's that but again it's g10 so in the end i'm probably not gonna like want one of these um so that's aesthetics now real quick on weight i don't know the like actual weights um but this guy's a little heavier not by much um uh, but this one feels a little lighter than this one it makes sense this is a titanium frame lock and it does have a titanium scale a small one on the inside of the micarta um and this one has steel liners that are pretty thin and then G10. So it's just a little bit uh, lighter. Um, you do have these uh, wire clips on both knives. So very similar in that department. Uh, oh, and I do want to mention this one comes in a titanium variant. So full titanium, which is going to be a little heavier, I'm guessing. I had that one and I do believe so. Uh, which comes with a brass backspacer. So it's definitely going to be heavier. Then there's a brass variant with, I believe, a titanium uh, backspacer that's obviously going to be heavier. This guy comes in many forms, um, you know, regular black uh, G10 and S30V. There's a Rex 45 one, I believe. I'm sure there's others that I just can't think of. Maybe not. That might be it. But anyway, um, ah, there's got to be like a St. Nick's one in 4V or something. And it, steels can change, you know. So S30V instead of 204P, um, 4V if there is a St. Nick's one. So keep that in mind. This is always going to be LMAX um, in the three variants, okay? This one is no longer available. Uh, Giant Mouse had a run. They sold out. I'm sure they're making more. Riot made these. Um, and uh, they sold like hotcakes. So I'm sure they're making more of these so that uh, they can sell you one. But I do see them on the secondary occasionally. Um, these were a sprint run through River's Edge Cutlery and are no longer available selling on the secondary, probably for ridiculous prices. If you want one of these, I suggest you check out the uh, Spider Co. Oh, God, what's it called? The Millie, Par no, Millie PM2 Para 3 Club. On Facebook, Jake actually uh, is a moderator for that group. Um, so if I remember, I'll throw a link to that group in the description as well. Really cool place to hang out. I've been in there for a few months now since Jake kind of invited me. And that was really what got me back on Facebook. Um, I totally went off of Facebook because it, you guys know it sucks. But for knives, it's pretty awesome. And now I'm in a bunch of groups and it's a lot of fun. And that is one of the main ones um, that's just fun to check in and see what's going on. And uh, it's just an interesting group. And the uh, co-creators of it 
Thomas Moore and Jason Beatty are just really cool dudes. Jake has done podcasts with each of them at this point, and uh, very interesting, um, cool, intelligent, uh, somewhat intense individuals. Really, really cool guys, down to earth as well. Um, and uh, just, it's a knife guy's just like heaven in there, you know? So check it out. Um, but yeah, these are not available to just buy. Um, you're probably going to pay a lot to get one of these at this point. Um, and they may do another run, but the way it takes Spyderco, it takes them forever to get these exclusives out. So it'll be a while. Um, yeah, so that's availability. They're basic, basically both only available in the secondary currently, um, but may come back for both. Okay. Um, we talked about the wire clips. That was aesthetics. Uh, ergos this is a big one guys so let's start with the little native it's small I'll tell you that much um this knife is extremely comfortable um it melts into my freaking hand like a glove and if this one actually has a reversible clip if i reversed it let me feel it in this hand yeah it's even better that clip is there but you don't feel it on this side. So it's even better than when I hold it like this because I have that clip between my fingers. So I'm pretending the clip is reversed because I can do it on this knife. Uh, this choil right here is generous and very comfortable, okay? Then you have this larger kind of choil for the next two fingers. And then you have this kind of flat to the end. And it is just a hand melter, guys. My finger or my thumb can go all the way to the tip of the blade. I have full control of this thing. Um, I could cut for days in this position. Yeah, I can hold it back here if I want to do something different. I don't know what. I, maybe I need a little reach or something. Uh, functional blade with the uh, drop point going down. So you can get into things. Um, you can kind of do the pinch grip like this. You can use the hole kind of as a as a traction point. I like to do that sometimes. You just stick your thumb in there and then you, you have good control. Um, this is a home run in ergonomics for such a tiny knife. Uh, while we have this mat out, we might as well measure them, right? Um, inches, that's what we want, right guys, inches. All right, so this is the Spyderco Little Native. You're looking at, what, three and a half inches, basically. Three and a half inches closed. You're looking at Two and a half inches of blade, two and an eighth, is that yeah, two and an eighth of cutting edge. Um, and then overall size, just about six inches. So um, pretty, pretty small on this guy, right? Here's your ace riff. Closed, you are looking at about three and a half inches open blade length i'm sorry yeah three inches no what am i doing uh two and a half inches again to the scale um two and an eighth inches of um cutting edge and oh so uh, just shy of six inches so it's a little bit shorter on this guy the angle is hard for you to see but trust me i can see it it's a little bit shorter than six inches um so this guy's Overall, just the tiniest bit smaller. Okay, so there you go. We got that knocked out. Nice. Um, ergonomics on this guy. Also very good. Also melt in your hand. Also can reach up to the tip. Not all the way like I can on the Spyderco, but most of the way. Obviously, mileage will vary based on your hand. Um, one thing I want to note that is a huge difference is I cannot reverse the clip on this knife this is a right hand only knife um and that's kind of a bummer um and then the frame lock is another kind of bummer there uh, but not for ergonomics just for ergonomics right here as a lefty i'm biting into that clip a little bit and i can't do anything about it like i can on this guy uh right-handed you're gonna have the same experience you did on this right uh, very comfortable now one big difference the choil 
at least from the feel of it, the Choil on the Spyderco seems to be larger. And I think it's going to be kind of deceptive, but it's just, if I go from like this hump to this hump, the Spyderco um, Choil is the slightest bit bigger. And then a key difference is right here, this little hump. Now I understand why it's there. I don't have any worries of that blade touching me at all. And my whole fat finger fits in here like a glove, right? And it's extremely comfortable. And this is a compression lock with a hole for deployment and no flipper, okay? That's important. On this guy, the choil is just big enough. But you see that edge? Comes all the way back. And I do feel it every once in a while. Like I swipe across it. Never cut myself, but I definitely can feel it. And if I was in a rush or something and grabbed it, I could definitely see myself cutting myself. I don't know if that's an issue. Lastly, the flipper tab. You can feel it. And everything feels a little bit thinner because of that, I guess. I don't know. It's interesting. It just feels like it's thinner in the choil. Um, the blade stock must be... Yep. Okay. No. I don't know. They're pretty similar. So it's just... This is more comfortable, guys. I don't feel anything thin or anything like digging into me. It just fits like a glove for that finger. And on this one, it's comfortable, but it's a little bit thin. And that flipper tab kind of like bites you a little bit. I don't know. And then the edge goes all the way back. So um, I got to give it to the compression lock in the uh, ergos department. So, hey, let's do this on the fly. Let's make a list. All right, let's make a list. Sorry, I accidentally showed an address, and I am definitely not going to leave that in. Um, remove address. <laughs> Footage. I need to remember that shit. Um, all right. So, let's make a list here, right? So, aesthetics. There's a TH, right? Aesthetics. Ergos, you're going to see my terrible handwriting. Um, action, carry, um, what else, sounds, it's a new one for me, or acoustics, value, and recommendation, that's not really, really one, so, unless I think it's something, we have one, two, three, four, five, six categories, okay, um, I'm sure I'll think of something, oh, materials, right, materials, all right, I think that's it. All right, so, so far we have a win for the uh, Little Native in aesthetics, at least for me on this specific one. But I think in general, I just like the look of this name slightly better. Ergos, Little Native, definitely. Slightly, but if you have both in hand, it, it, it is totally a difference, okay? Um, I'm going to go ahead right away and... Just pop this guy in pocket. Yeah, it's a little tight on the clip. And this, this goes in and out of pocket like a dream. I remember that. You do have the flipper tab, but it's very minimal. So just from that real quick, this being super tight, I'm giving the carry right to uh, the Riv. Because I remember it carrying like a dream. Um... All right, so that, that leaves us with action at this point, right? So you have the Spidey Flick on this guy, which this has a classic Spyderco uh, compression lock detent, which is just not very strong. Um, it's not that you can, like, easily shake it out or anything. It's just that you can not It's made so you can thumb roll it, like, if you want to. Um, and it's very tight, this specific one, anyway. Like, right there. It just has a lot of grit right there what is that i don't know if it just needs to break in because of the cerakote but oh man it's just like so when i go to flick it sometimes it only goes like halfway because it gets stuck at that spot um but if you give it the flick it flies out it locks up and the compression lock it drops shut right look at that so, in terms of action on those aspects, Jesus. Yeah, I don't know. 
It's just hard for me to repeat. I'm on camera as well. Um, one big issue is the compression lock, which I'm going to group this into action. Um, I, as a lefty, it just stinks having to put your thumb in here like this, get hit by a nub, and then you have nowhere to go. Like, now, what do I do? I have to regroup like this and grab it, and then I'm like this, right? Right-handed, you have the um, advantage of just doing this, and then you're right back to it, right? Um, so that's kind of a hindrance on action for me, plus that spider code detent. Um, this one, you can flip. You can uh, spidey flick. Hold on. You can spidey flick. Uh, you can thumb flick. So you can do all those things right-handed. Man, that lock bar, though. That's... We're getting there. I can't do this. I'm left-handed. Oh, there you go. I can do it. Thumb flick is hard right-handed, I think. Yeah. Oh, that lock bar is just in the way. Um, so, the lock on this one is a hindrance. Almost more right-handed, honestly. But um, So they both have their issues there. The, this is made by Riot, and this detent is money. So when you get that Spidey Flick, it is extremely satisfying. And I bet being right-handed, it's even more so. So I'm going to go ahead and give action to the rib. So we're tied up, guys. Two to two. Sounds. Okay, so they both sound pretty good on the deployment, right? That one sounds really good, and so does the rib. Um, but this one doesn't have a sound on the close, right? It just kind of like drops down, maybe this. But this one, it just has a little bit more of an audible crack, and then that ting at the end. So the rib is getting sounds for me. All right, materials. So this one's interesting. I hate G10, I told you that. Um, I love my Carta, especially when it's done well. And Giant Mouse does it really well. Riot does it really well. I love Titanium. Um, and I like Elmax a lot. I also think 204P is a winner. A really good steel that's underutilized. Um, and I like the Cerakote on here. I love the color scheme. That's not really materials, though, right? I have to stick to materials. So, um, G10 just... Yeah, the G10 just kills it, guys. Titanium and Elmex, one notch down on the steel, eight notches up on the uh, materials. So, I got to go with the Riv. So, value. Here's an interesting one. This right here is $185. The one I had in titanium is $200. Um, but we're talking titanium frame lock with micarta and LMAX steel made by Riot overseas, right? Here, God, I got to remember. I don't even know what these cost. hundred and I'm going to ballpark it at $150, okay? Maybe it was $160, maybe it was $130. No, it was $136, I believe. Correct me if I'm wrong. My brain is just lighting up when I say 136. I don't know why. So $136 for G10, 204P steel, compression lock, reversible uh, deep carry clip. Um, also, neither of these go to the butt end of the knife. Very similar in so many regards, guys. Um, man, value is interesting. For a Riot made knife, 185 bucks. 200 bucks for the titanium is really good. Um, it's tiny, but that's really good. I mean, these F5s, this was 275 made by Riot with LMAX. This one's M390, so 204P M390 titanium. This was 250 bucks. Um, and this was 185. I mean, that's just a good damn price. That's good value in my opinion for it, even though it's small. Um, it's a good value for this specific knife. Um, but 136 
bucks for 204p and a cool colorway exclusive sprint run that's just one of the great things about the sprint runs from spider co guys um you can get these cool materials or uh, at least blade materials and pay almost the same as a, a stock one right that's just one of the benefits of the uh, sprint run series or whatever you want to call it now the determining factor in, in my um, selection here is going to be the fact that this is made in America. Um, so not only is it cheaper, by a decent margin, it has better blade steel, and it's made in the United States of America. And and guys, I'm you've seen my collection probably. I'm not some like USA only guy, right? But if I can get it and the value is there, 100% I am. Um, I'm not saying this isn't worth 185 It totally is. But this is a value, I think, actually. This is a good price. 136 bucks, even call it 150 for 204p, made in America, on a good knife. I mean, I could carry either of these and really enjoy them, so... I got to give it to the little native here, guys. So, little native. All right. So, I think that's all we have. Aesthetics, ergos, action, carry, sounds, value, materials. I can't think of anything else I would want to add. Um, the only other thing I would add as, like, a caveat, which I'm not going to count this towards the overall thing, is uh, left ability. Okay, so this is what I'm going to, I'm going to add this in. Um, and I'm going to start trying to do this. And somebody asked me to do this. So from 0 to 10, what is the left ability of these knives, right? So basically, how good are they? How functional are they for a lefty? And I'm going to start with this little native here. So you guys saw, I can flick it very well. If I reverse the clip, it would be even better because I'd have something to hang on to. Um, this sucks, Okay. I would never want to be walking and carrying this knife and trying to close it. Um, if I was doing that, I would 100% two-hand close this or switch to my right hand um, to do it just because I wouldn't be comfortable um, doing it. But the flick, the deployment is money. Uh, I haven't tried doing like a thumb flick. I'm sure it works. If I had that clip, I'd have more room. And it, and it is reversible, so i got to give it that. And it has a reversible clip. So this one... On a left ability scale, because of the compression lock, um, is going to be a five. So the little native is a five. Basically, it gets points for the clip, but then it loses points for having this compression lock. So uh, it kind of ends up in the middle there. So if you're a lefty, you know, uh, it's not the best option, really. It's just, you know. Yeah, so a five there. Now the Riv, as a lefty, you have this frame lock to contend with and no reversible clip. So you lose points for that. Um, but surprisingly enough, this frame lock is not as big of a deal as I thought it would be when I got it. I really was like, yeah, I'm going to sell this instantly because it's going to just be locked up all the time, right? I can use the flipper all day, no problem. And then for the Spidey flick, I just you just have to be a little careful. And once you get the hang of it, it works every time. Now, you've seen me get caught up a couple times. It's because I'm switching knives and I'm on the camera. But I could basically reliably flick this every time when I had it. Um, and it's comfortable in hand for a lefty, as mentioned before. Uh, but doesn't have the clip, right? So this one is also going to get a 5. For example... A knife that would get like a 10, right, would be this bug out because it's ambidextrous. 100% ambi works so good for a lefty, right? It's not that it's the best knife for a lefty. That's not the 10 part. The 10 part is just functionability and usability as a lefty, right? I hope that makes sense. So this would be like a 10. Um, that's just a good example. Another one is the Chaparral here. Um, as a lefty, I can switch the club. It's a liner lock. I can do everything normal. 10. 
Um, so, you know, that's just kind of like a baseline. This Mach 1 has a right-hand clip, right-hand lock. It is a front flipper, so it's a bit harder to manip manipulate lefty because you don't have a clip to hang on to. Um, you know, it's just a little bit tougher. This would be like a three or a four, even though I really love it. But to most lefties, I think it would be tough. Um, so anyway, it's just kind of a gauge there of what I'm trying to do with that. Um, so back to the battle or whatever. We have uh, one, two, three for the little native, right? One, two, three, aesthetics, ergos, and value went to the little native. Then the RIV got action, carry, sounds, and materials and uh, came out on top. So the RIV won four to three in this battle of knives or whatever the hell we want to call it. Um, and I, I'm pretty surprised by that. Um, after just doing all that, I really kind of wanted the little native to win. Um, but that compression lock, um, you know, and the G10, that really kind of hampers it for me. Um, yeah, that's just kind of how it is. And this guy is a fun little guy to play with. Um, and it's made by Riot. And, you know, it just, the action's really good. And, um, you know, these kind of things will be different for everybody. So it's fun to do these. I'll probably try to refine it a little bit. I'm sure I was all over the place, but this is my first time doing it. Uh, anybody, if you have uh, good ideas for names for this battle or whatever, I'd love to hear them. Uh, and let me know what you think of that left ability thing. I just made that word up on the fly. So... You know, maybe it's stupid, but for lefties, I think it would be helpful to have a, a, a lefty scale for every knife. Um, how friendly is it to a lefty? Because that's something we always contend with. And not knowing ahead of time when you drop the cash, it sucks. Because uh, there's a lot of knives we get in hand and we're like, ah, oh, crap. Can't even, can't even use it, you know? Like the uh, area on here. This would be a, a zero. <laughs> Maybe a one, because you literally can't flick the thing because of the, the, the lock bar. Unless you get in a specific, Jesus, specific, you know, spot. And you can't thumb flick it because of the lock bar, you know. Um, so this is basically a zero or a one. It's unusable. Um, but I'm really happy I got to check that out. Anyway. Um, that's kind of a breakdown there. So this has been the comparison of the Spyderco Little Native and the Giant Mouse Ace Riv, who is your winner, winner, chicken dinner. Give it up for the Ace Riv. <laughs> All right. Really appreciate you guys letting me rant, rave, and just be an absolute jackass. I love you all. I hope you have a fantastic day, and I... We'll catch you later.